Hello everyone, I am Kriti Kulkarni, I am second year medical student from Navodaya Medical College. So today we will be studying about uh, general anesthetics. Uh, mainly we will be discussing about inhalational, uh, inhalational anesthetics. So first and the foremost, we'll get, we need to get to know what exactly is the definition of the anesthetics. Anesthetics is going to mainly cause loss, uh, reversible or temporary loss of sensation and consciousness. The four cardinal features of uh, an anesthetic is firstly there will be loss of all the sensations in mainly pain and then there will be unconsciousness, there will be immobility and there will be loss of reflexes. And then the next definition we need to know is what is MAC, uh, minimal alveolar concentration. That is the minimum concentration of an anesthetic that is required in the alveoli to cause immobility in a patient at a highest pain stimulus uh, mainly in 50 percent of the patients uh, so it has uh, it is also related to uh, oil gas partition coefficient next uh, to the uh, let's get to know what exactly are the sites uh, where an anesthetic plays role so firstly to cause uh, unconsciousness we have thalamus and uh, reticular activating system at these places, this anesthetic is going to act to cause unconsciousness. To cause uh, amnesia, it is going to act on cerebral cortex and uh, hippocampus. And to cause uh, immobility, it needs to act on spinal cord. Nextly, there are six different mechanisms of actions uh, by which these anesthetics act. Uh, firstly, they'll be they'll be acting on mainly the uh, ligand gated channels, that is GABA, uh, clo GABA chlorine channels, where uh, there'll be uh, due to which clo when chlorine enters in the cell there will be hyperpolarization so there will be uh, at rest the cells do not act so that's one of the mechanism the second is mechanism is by acting on cation channels or mainly inhibiting the cation channels that is we have uh, calcium and uh, sodium all these channels will be getting inhibited then there will be stimulation of uh, potassium channels and they can also act on uh, presynaptic uh, sorry uh, the vesicles in the presynaptic there they can act uh, some proteins like uh, SV2A there they are going to act due to which there will be no release of uh, these um, uh, neurotransmitters and then uh, they can uh, the actions of EN2 and ketamine uh, like uh, anesthetics uh, are mainly they look to act on two places the first one is they, they are going to inhibit NMDA uh, glutamate receptors that is to reduce the activity of glutamate because that is the main excitatory uh, amino acid present in the brain or they can also inhibit calcium channels um, and uh, fluorinated anesthetics like barbiturates and barbiturates are going to cause uh, analgesia and amnesia next come to the stages of anesthesia there are mainly four stages coming to the first stage it is called as a stage of uh, analgesia where it begins from the uh, but beginning of uh, respiring anesthetics to uh, the loss of consciousness stage two, stage two a stage of delirium where it begins from loss of consciousness to the uh, beginning of normal respiration stage three is from normal respiration to the succession of respiration this is divided into four planes in the first plane there will be uh, at the end of the first plane there will be uh, that ice becomes fixed in the second plane, uh, there will be loss of corneal and laryngeal reflexes. In the third plane, the pupils start dilating. And in the fourth uh, plane, there will be intercostal paralysis and the person starts uh, abdominal respiration. Then uh, the fourth, uh, that is stage 1, analgesia, stage 2, delirium, stage 3, surgical anesthesia. And we discussed about the four planes. And to the last one, med medullary uh, paralysis. Over here, the person, uh, there will be cessation of breathing and, and uh, circulation. And finally, the person dies. Now, uh, coming to the next point, uh, what are uh, some common effects of uh, inhalational anesthetics? Here, uh, there will be suppression of PEG mainly. And the second point is, uh, there will be decrease in cerebral uh, metabolic rate due to which cerebral blood flow decreases. Uh, but later, due to the vasodilation, cerebral flow will increase. So, it should be not given in the patients who have uh, raised intracranial pressure. Then, uh, all the uh, fluorinated anesthetics is going to basically lower the blood pressure. Then, there will be respiratory depression, bronchodilatation, 
like uh, we had circulatory vasodilatation we also have bronchodilatation then um, there will be um, decreased in gfr due to which there will be decreased in urine flow and there will be decreased uh, gip so the six points goes like first one is uh, eeg is going to suppress the second point is firstly metabolic rate decreases due to which cbf decreases but then later due to vasodilatation also cbf is going to increase and the next point is uh, like uh, vasodilatation there is also uh, increase in uh, uh, dilatation of bronchodilatation due to which there is respiratory uh, depression then there will be a uh, git depression there will be gfr is going to decrease due to which uh, urine flow is also going to decrease and they are also going to decrease the blood pressure because of the uh, dilatation vasodilatation then coming to the pharmacokinetics of uh, inhalational anesthesias uh, firstly uh, the depth of anesthesia depends upon the potency and partial pressure potency is nothing but mac that is minimal alveolar concentration and partial pressure next uh, coming to the induction and recovery that depends upon the rate of change of partial pressure and transfer of anesthesia we have uh, uh, different tensions that is alveolar tension to blood and to the tissues or mainly brain because brain is the place we are supposed to uh, where anesthesia is supposed to work now coming to the uh, different factors that is going to govern uh, partial pressure of anesthesia are uh, firstly the partial pressure of anesthesia is going to depend upon the concentration of uh, anesthesia in inspired air secondly it depends upon the solubility of the anesthesia in the blood uh, more the soluble less is the induction uh, and then the third one is solubility in the tissues it is mainly highly soluble in adipose tissues so it is uh, helping in the determination of its concentration in tissues at uh, equilibrium then thirdly we have cerebral blood flow the more uh, as such cerebral blood flow is more so the action of anesthesia will be faster and then we have alveolar exchange it is uh, when ventilation and perfusion is equal that is it is not mismatched then uh, there is a free uh, exchange then pulmonary ventilation with the head, uh, hyperventilation there is more amount of anesthesia reaching the uh, lungs due to which it will be easily circulated next coming to the elimination elimination is uh, whenever um, the anesthetic inhalation is discontinued um, uh, so speaking about elimination the firstly uh, whenever like whenever the inhalation of uh, anesthetic is stopped the same channel which was helping in uh, induction is going to cause uh, recovery and uh, so all the inhaled anesthetics are going to get ex uh, excreted that is all like the anesthetics is going to be exhaled by the lungs itself then metabolism uh, so it is uh, like whenever and uh, it is usually not metabolized anesthetics are usually not metabolized except halothrin which is getting metabolized in uh, liver and uh, it is uh, the ones which are highly lipid soluble are going to re remain in adipose tissue for a longer time and due to uh, less bl blood perfusion to these sites uh, the excretion of these gas uh, anesthetics turns out to be a little slower next coming to the techniques of inhalation um, the techniques of inhalation of anesthetic there are two types open drop techniques which is a wasteful method uh, it is only used for cheap anesthetics and the second type of method we have is through machines there are two uh, three different types the one is uh, open system where open system is uh, the exhaled gas by the patient is not getting inhaled again and the second one will be closed system where a person uh, is going to exhale the gas which is passed through a soda line where co2 is getting absorbed and the same gas is inhaled by the patient again and the third is a semi-closed kind of system next coming to the properties of an ideal anesthetic there are three different categories for the patient it should not be very it should be pleasant it should not be very pungent smell it should be uh it shouldn't cause nausea and vomiting and coming to the surgeon it should be uh it should the uh, anesthetic property should last until the whole surgery is done and for an anesthetic it should not cause many adverse effects it should not be toxic to heart liver etc etc and uh, it, uh, the margin of safety should be more next uh, coming to different inhalational uh, anesthetics we have a yeah, number of them like n2o halothane um, ether and uh, if uh, iflorane um, isoflorane disflorane uh, sevoflorane xenon etc 
so advantages in common we can write uh, because induction and recovery are uh, based on the same properties whenever it is highly inducible uh, it is also highly recoverable also so uh, all of these are uh, have good induction and recovery except for ether then coming to the disadvantages it can be based uh, if it is inflammatory or not coming to the first one that is nitrous oxide it is uh, less expensive it is good inducible so hence it is also good recovery we have it is potent analgesic but it ca it cannot be given as an anesthetic so uh, alone it should be combined with something else also but on long term uh, on giving it on a long term use it can cause uh, uh, impairment in DNA synthesis and also it can cause uh, bone marrow depression. Next coming to the ether, the main uh, problem why we don't use ether off is, is, it, uh, is because it is inflammable. Next coming to the halothane, uh, halothane is not a great muscle relaxant but it is potent and uh, its status of it is used uh, it is not being used sorry because it is highly toxic to heart kidney etc so this comes under disadvantage then coming to uh, efflurane isoflurane and all so mainly uh, efflurane uh, isoflurane's disadvantage is that uh, it uh, 